All right. What's up, everybody? Hey, guys. So big, uh, another big thing, right? Told you it was going to be coming early part of this year. Uh, Amazon getting, getting us all riled up for, um, you know, in anticipation of the rings of power of uh, formerly known as Latron Prime around these parts. So today, the big thing was a uh, surprise article from Vanity Fair dot uh, com that uh, contained a bunch of photographs right from the show and also uh, gives a lot of background so it's basically a write-up on the show and what we can expect from it right awesome so wow yeah it's okay. it's got a lot it's got a lot in it a lot we're getting some questions answered right um and it's all in anticipation or in the lead up to the trailer on super bowl sunday right this upcoming sunday uh so what you need to do is you need to hit that subscribe button right here on YouTube for the Tolkien road. You need to hit the notification button and you need to stay tuned because we're going to be covering it every time there's something, you know, that comes up that's worth talking about. We're going to be talking about it over here and, um, and given our opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing for us. Well, this is at least for me, I don't necessarily want to speak for you, Greta. Thanks. John. Cause, Cause sometimes you see it differently than I do. It's true. Um, I, my whole thing is like, stick to Tolkien, like just do, do the things that Tolkien laid out, right? You know, be students of Tolkien. Like the guy was just a genius. I heard somebody else call him that the other day. And I was just like, yes, he like in, in comparison to other people who have done things in the 20th century and the 21st century. And just saying like, he was a genius that we might not, the, the likes of which we might not see again mm -hmm. for a very long time. Right. I agree. Yeah. Um, a creative genius in that way. So, you know, and that's what we're all about over here. We want people to do things according to that. And that is my deepest de desire for this show is that they, they make something awesome that is completely uh, just says, and, and that in the process of making it, they are saying to themselves, like, what would Tolkien have thought, right? Mm -hmm. Would Tolkien have done it this way, mm -hmm. right? Um, at least in the storytelling, right? Not necessarily, you know, he was, he obviously wasn't a filmmaker himself, but in this terms of the storytelling, right? And the, the tone of the show, the themes of the show, all of these things, were those things that Tolkien actually cared about? Were those things that mattered to him? And, and quite honestly, when they do that, I'm going to be the first one to sing the show's praises. When they deviate from that, I'm going to not be nice, right? Keep it civil, but I'm going to be critical, all right? So, you know, just so you all know where I'm coming from. Um, does that jive with your oh, perspective, yeah. Greta? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I, I might be a little bit more willing than you to give some creative license. Um, but I definitely want the spirit of Tolkien mm -hmm. to just kind of like, just radiate off of everything yeah. that's done. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so yeah, once again, hit that subscribe button. Let's talk about this article. So I'm going to share this, uh, share the screen here. All right. So you guys should see this now. All right. And starting off with uh, apparently Gucci is going to figure. I guess know, so. Importantly in the show. Yeah. So, I, I, think, I think Tolkien would approve. Yeah. He's a pretty fashionable dude. High fashion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, um, so this is Morphid Clark, AKA Galadriel. All right, aka Gladriel. So there's several there's several photos throughout this. So maybe we run through the photos real quick, That's and a good idea. Um, and then we can talk about maybe some of the highlights because I have read the article, you have not. I've right not. Um, mm. now. I'm not going to hit every detail of the article, but we're going to hit the you know hit the high points as I mm. remember it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, Gladriel okay. up out you know head up out of the water right here. Yep. Yep. We've got Galadriel uh, looking like she's in some kind of battle scene right here, carrying a sword. And that's uh, the same person that apparently that's the caption says it's Galadriel. So I asked, the, I asked the same thing, quite honestly. I was like, is that really the same mm, okay, person? And I okay. guess it's like, okay, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. So that's hard. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, then we've got. Here we go. We've got three other photos right here, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got obviously what appears to be a dwarf right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, this is Owain Arthur as Prince Durin the Fourth, uh, okay. Prince of the bustling subterranean realm of Kazadum. Kazadum. Right. Yep. Yeah. Then we have the dwarven princess Disa, played by Sophia Nomvete. I think that's I 
the text is kind of small, y'all, so I might get some of these words wrong. I think that's St- right. Standing yeah. at Casa Doom's, uh, Casa Doom's entrance, hmm. right? So, um, did we meet any dwarven princesses in the Silmarillion? No, this is the first dwarf uh, female, I believe, that we've uh, that's actually even been on screen. And I, I and I and, on, and from the stories, I don't think there's any dwarven princess or uh, think, uh, women in the stories. No, Although there the nature, and they're alluded to, right? <clears throat> They are, and uh, the nature of Middle Earth uh, does refer to them as well. The okay. recent book, yeah. Okay. And then we have this Sylvan elf, uh, Arandir, played mm. by Ismail Cruz Cordova, is a character who's been created for the series. Okay. Uh, I would say that uh, probably both of these characters here have been created for the series. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if Prince Durin the Fourth is canonical or not, but um, he he's probably he might be listed, you know, in a uh, in a genealogy table somewhere. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, we have a looks like a behind the scenes sort of photo. Um, mm, and this mm-hmm. is Galadriel and Halbrand, Charlie Vickers, uh, meet in dire circumstances. So, hmm. yeah. So, okay. And then we have young Elrond played by Robert Aramayo as a politically ambitious young leader. So okay. this is Elrond here. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll come back and react, maybe react to these. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have, Bronwyn played by Nazanin Bonyadi with her forbidden love, Arandir, who we've met already oh, in the village created. of yeah. Tir Harad. Mm-hmm. And then we have Elrond and Galadriel reunited in the majestic elven kingdom of Lindan, right? Mm. And uh, and so this is, you know, this will be an interesting scene. So, um, of course, uh, they are distantly related, right? They're like distant cousins, but, um, uh, but they are also... Um, uh Elrond marries uh Galadriel's daughter, right? Oh, so, that's right. Yes. Uh Calebrion. Mm-hmm. So okay. Then we have Nazanin uh Boniades Bronwyn is a single mother and healer seen here in her apothecary in Middle Earth Southlands. Is that another character that's been created for the show? Yeah, I'm I'm I mean most of these characters except for Galadriel and Elrond, Elrond. and maybe this dwarf is yeah. alluded to in a table, but all the mm-hmm. other ones are created for this show. Yeah. Um, and then director Jay Bayona points the way for two nomadic hunters wandering the fields of Middle Earth. Wow. So yeah, I'm looking at this photo and I have to be honest, I'm thinking that I'm thinking to myself, are these wizards of some sort, right? Um, are these are these figures like um, you know, uh we're not meant to know that they're they're wizards yet, you know, but uh but who else would wear that? I know. I'm like, who would wear actually wear that? So right, right. I, don't know. I mean it's cool looking, no yeah. doubt. But um, yeah, I, th- I think you're probably onto something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne, who are the showrunners, right, behind the scenes there. And then we have Charlie Vickers as Hal- Halbrand, a new character who is fugitive from his own past. And that's the one who Gladrail was on the raft with um, in an earlier oh, Okay. Photo. Okay. Yeah. So those are the photos yeah. here. I believe okay. I covered all of them. Okay. Um, I don't know. Re- reaction to the photos, Greta, before we uh, talk about some of the article? Um, well, I, I, I think I like what I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like this casting for Galadriel. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like it's appropriate. Um, and I mean, I really don't think I can take much issue with anything that I saw. The scenery looks beautiful, which I expected. The costume's amazing, which again, we'd already talked about that a little bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like they didn't give us a whole lot, mm-hmm. but um, that they gave us enough, I think, to kind of satiate us for a few days. Um, I will say it always makes me nervous when they start creating characters. Oh well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, does I just think of you know that's like why I just really didn't like the Hobbit movies very much, you know, because they just created all these characters yeah um that had no place you know had no part in the written story so um i mean i i'm i'm going to suspend judgment yeah uh, i i am interested to see what they do with them um but i i'm a little nervous yeah what are you thinking well, uh, I have very mixed feelings. I have very mixed feelings. I will say that this being the first shot that I see as I open up the article, I'm mm-hmm. like, that's not what I think of when I think of Gladriel. I'm sorry. 
like i'm not saying that this doesn't have a place in the show but i'm just mm-hmm. like i'm like okay well, well me, she's a young galadriel okay, but let me right? let me kind of i need to get all my like for, i need to sure. i need to like work through this okay this, this is some therapy for me people all right <laughs> get comfortable i'm not y'all. sure what i think yet okay i just have feelings feelings we all vanity, have lots of feelings <laughs> vanity fair being the place they do this all right uh okay i thought the article enough. you sent me was from geek tyrant well, that was just where I saw the initial uh, stuff, but this is the actual write-up of it. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so they were just okay. linking to to this one. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. That's the Geek uh, website that I look at all the time, Geek Tyrant. Um, anyway, so I'm just like, that's just not how, like, that's just not my, what I think of Galadriel. But anyway, that's that's a very, like, nebulous thing. That's an impression, y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I'm like, this is the second one, and I'm like, I just, was, was Galadriel, like, a hardcore warrior it's a fair question maybe in her younger years i, I mean know. i'm not saying she couldn't be i'm just saying like was she according to tolkien um like okay all right that's my i'm just giving my, my reactions right um looks like a normal dwarf mm-hmm. prince during the fourth mm-hmm. sounds good mm-hmm. uh, oh okay a black dwarf princess all right so interesting um I'm, you know, there's been, a, there's like y'all, there's been so much controversy about the ideas of, um, of, uh, like casting non European, of uh, non people of European descent. We'll just use that term in, uh, in various roles. And I will just have to say that uh, I think there's room for that. And, and my whole thing is, are they, are they just fudging it for some ulterior or ulterior politically correct motive? Or are they actually, expand like going with things that are possibilities from tolkien's world mm, right mm-hmm, from from mm-hmm. the things that tolkien gave us yeah. right and, yep. and bequeathed to us and yep. all this yeah that is what is important to me so i'm looking at these things and i'm like okay i'll have to think about these things some more right um i i have nothing on the surface you know it, you know it's obviously like it's, it, there's there's no um there's no like racial animus in, in, in any of this thinking, it's simply that question. Is this something Tolkien would have done? Is this mm-hmm. something Tolkien would have approved, right? If he were around to, to kind of guide the show and the creation of it, right? That is what is important to me. And, uh, and when I'll tell you that right now, if you don't know that, right, I mean, Tolkien just didn't have a racist bone in his body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he would have gone with these things, right? right. It's, you know, and, and that's what I come back to. So uh, I'm open-minded. I'm going to see, I'm going to think about these things and listen to their backstories and everything and see how they connect mm-hmm. to it all. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see what comes of it. So, um, you know, it'll be <laughs> fun discussions for sure. Um, yeah. And then I look at this one and I'm just, okay. I just keep on coming back. I'm like, I think, I think I'm worried they're going to make Gladriel somebody she's not. Mm. Um, Again, there's a lot of room for discussion on these things, but that's, that's where I'm going. That's my fear. Right. Um, and what do we know about Galadriel? Well, prior <clears throat> to like, apart from the Lord of the Rings. Well, she, I mean, she plays a, you know, a significant role, not a major role, I'd say, but a significant role in the, uh, in the Silmarillion, right. She is a, uh, Noldor. Mm-hmm. She is the daughter of Finarfin. Um, yes, and uh, so she, and so therefore she is a like niece of Feanor, right? And uh, so she is a royal, you know, she is of the like kind of the royal house of mm-hmm. the Noldor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And she is a person that Tolkien, you know, said said a good bit about, right? Even in his letters and in other writings, and you know, unfinished tales. There's mm-hmm. a whole uh, chapter we haven't discussed in our podcast concerning. Galadriel Mm. and so there's a good bit to be said and this is why I'm saying like I'm not necessarily you know this is my reaction right Mm -hmm. to this article that I literally just read today so I'm not trying to say that how dare they right I'm Mm -hmm. just saying like this doesn't feel like Galadriel to me Mm -hmm. but but I'm open to having my mind changed right Mm -hmm. I'm open to having my mind changed that's good I'm open to good arguments cool right I'm open to good arguments about why these things are you know are cool and I'm open to seeing the show right I really want this I want this show to be awesome y'all I really do. Yeah. I want this show to be everything that I dreamed of, you know, for the several years of doing Tolkien podcasting before it was announced. Mm-hmm. Right. When I thought this would something like this would never happen. Right. Uh, 
and here it is. It's going to, you know, it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm excited to see what this could be. Mm. Me too. All right. Um, but I think the thing with this image is, you know, it's like, okay. Gladriel, but this time I think I'm pretty sure she was married to, uh, um, Celeborn. Mm. So what's she doing hanging with this mortal dude on a raft out here? I'm just saying, I'm just saying y'all. <laughs> okay. It's a fair question. I guess we'll maybe see. she's rescuing him. I y'all, if they try to do some kind of like, you know, immortal mortal thing, like love interest between like, that's just not Galadriel to me. I'm sorry. Like, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. All right. Elrond. Um, what do you think of Elrond here? Greta? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like a young, good younger mm -hmm. version of Elrond. Yeah, um, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that too. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful background shot. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe he's like, uh, he's like scoping out the land. He's like, I think I'll build Rivendell here. Yeah. Yeah. This will do. This will do. And we have Bronwyn and her forbidden love, Arandir, who of course we met before. So this will be interesting. Like this is a, uh, and, and it, of course it's not to say that I'm not okay with like love stories within the show. Um, there are love stories obviously within the legendarium mm -hmm. uh, established by Tolkien. And uh, I think it's, you know, there's several that involve a, uh, you know, mortal and immortal, uh, you know, a, a man and an, uh, a man and an elf. Right. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> obviously Baron and Luthien being the, the, the prototype of those stories. And then Arwen and Aragorn um, in the third age. <clears throat> so, you know, I think this is, um, I think this will be interesting and, and I'm, you know, except it's acceptable to me, both being new characters. Oh, that I'm surprised by that. Yeah. I think you just proved that you actually are willing to, to have your mind changed. Well, I'm, because I'll be honest, I didn't like this. You didn't like this? I didn't like this. No, it was too close to the <clears> whole <throat> thing in The Hobbit that I hated so much. Oh, the, between uh, the elf and the... And the Kate, Kate, Kate from yeah, Lost. Yes, Kate from Lost and... Um, and and the dwarf. It was. The, the dwarf. The dwarf, yeah. yes, the dwarf. Was it the dwarf? Uh, it, was, um, it, was, was it, it was either Feely or Keely. I can't remember which one. Yeah, it was... Oh, I thought there was an... Well, it was a love triangle between yeah, the Legolas love triangle. and, That's what and it was. Um, the, yes. and the Kate from Lost character yes. and... Yeah. Uh, and then I think it was Keely. I'm pretty sure it was Keely. Yeah. I think that, I think you're right about that. Yeah. I just like that, <clears throat> that whole thing just like ruined that movie for me. So, and this hits a little too close to that for me. Mm. So they're going to have to work real hard for me to be okay with this. I think we need to be open-minded to the idea. And I think the article gets into some of this. They, they're not working with a, um, you know, they're not working with an established like book like the Lord of the Rings was, right? That's true. Um, they are having to sort of make this story up from from kind of a sketch of a story, right? Um, and and so I'm willing to see them. And but again, my like parameters, the way I think about it is, it's like, would Tolkien approve of this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, would he be? Would would he were he alive today? Would he say that works for me? I'm okay yeah. with that, yeah. right? It's a good yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's a high standard, but yeah. it's, um, you know, I think it's the standard that's required for something that is, uh, that is something that's of this nature. Right. I agree. So, yeah. well, maybe a little point of dis uh, disagreement there, but, um, but that's going to be part mm -hmm. of the fun of this discussion. Oh right? yeah. Absolutely. Ongoing discussion. But I do love the tree in that shot. That tree is amazing. Yeah, the tree is... Ivana would be proud of that Well, tree. you got to have awesome trees. It's just, it is Middle Earth after mm -hmm. all. Uh, interesting shot here. Elrond and Galadriel are reunited in the majestic majestic elven kingdom of Lindon, mm -hmm. right? And again, I, I was thinking the same thing as you earlier. I was like, is this the same actress in all three of these pictures? It's just like, I wonder she if looks they different maybe in all three. I wonder if they captioned them wrong. Yeah, well, I'm wondering if maybe there's some misleading captioning going on. Um, I'm wondering, actually, if this is... Um, if this is Galadriel's daughter, right? Um, Calebrion, right? Oh, that so, Elrond ends up marrying, yeah. Right, yeah. Hmm. Um, because, yeah, they that's, and then she's the, uh, they're the parents of Arwen, of course, right? Right, so, yeah. Uh, that's. That seems more appropriate. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a very, like, loving 
look. I know. I was stance. like, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Galadriel and Elrond are not a thing. Don't go there. <laughs> yes. Okay. That is not like, no, that's a violation. That is a technical foul, right? You're sitting, other team gets two free shots, right? Um, like, don't go there. No. I mean, that, that's that's like you're out ejection mm-hmm. like ejection from the game <laughs> seriously so i really hope that either that's just a they're very affectionate toward he's very affectionate with his future mother-in-law um and she just thinks the world of him or um or that's Calebrion. so yeah huh. i just noticed that thing in the corner in the corner oh people down here yeah that's yeah weird yeah it just looks like you know some people just some people just some elves here i thought they were all by themselves but they're not just some folks again though that's that's pretty much how i would picture that place though yeah they did a good job with the scenery yeah yeah well i i fully expect this show to be visually stunning Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah so when we got uh then we have uh not yeah so this image i i tried her name i don't want to butcher her name any further but um this character who is obviously an elf uh, based on the shape of the ears. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is a single mother and healer. It looks like an interesting picture. So yeah, it does. I kind of like, I like that idea. Yeah. Of an, of an apothecary. Right. Cool. I think she's an elf now. Maybe she's a hobbit. Um, now they, they do talk in this article there. They answer the question of will there be hobbits in this show? Oh, okay. Uh, then we got these two wizards. I think I felt like these were wizards just because I'm like, they look like they got staffs, right? They got these cool staffs mm-hmm. and they look like they might have a little bit of a comic element to them, but also be like kind of the same comic style of comic element that Gandalf has where he's, mm-hmm. he's funny, but, but not really, but he's also very powerful. And intimidating. You know? That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. So I'm wondering if these are like the blue wizards or something yeah. like that. I think that's <clears> a good <throat> guess. Mm-hmm yeah yeah so uh and then we've got um Holobrand, who i assume is going to you know uh, he, he's he's given off like the the you know pensive mm-hmm. pensive stormy uh, uh aragorn vibes here yeah the, i was gonna say the he's series. he's the one that the ladies are probably gonna watch for yeah yeah he's yeah. the eye candy so yeah there we go so let's let's go through some of this article all right um i'm gonna hit the high points here all right. I'm going to start off by saying, uh, again, Gladriel, I'm concerned. Gladriel's world is a raging sea, far from the wise, ethereal elven queen that Kate Blanchett brought to Peter Jackson's acclaimed films. The Gladriel, played by Morfid Clark, is in Amazon's upcoming series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, is thousands of years younger, is angry and brash as she is clever and certain that evil is looming closer than anyone realizes. Hmm. Uh, she is thousands of years younger, no mm-hmm. doubt, but she's still thousands of years old at that point or, mm-hmm. or at least several hundred you know probably more like thousands um and especially if this is happening at the end of the second age so an angry as that's just i don't know as angry well, as brash as she's she is younger clever. she's younger but, but yeah okay how much younger right that's my point and and i just don't know okay. like i just don't know that that that's how galadriel ever was right um so it's, an, and that's actually an interesting debate, like, you know, and, and just in terms of the lore itself, because Tolkien himself went back and forth on the nature of Galadriel and like her early story and how culpable she was for, you know, leaving Valinor in the first place. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll have to see here about this one. Um, let's see, it goes into a lot of background about how the story, about how it came to be um, basically Jeff Bezos has more money than he knows what to do with. And he really liked Tolkien. So he was like, let's go buy this and do this. Right. Uh, it's interesting to note that both HBO and Netflix tried to get the rights to, you know, try to get the rights to do this too. And so it was Amazon that ultimately won out. Oh, um, okay. They give a lot of background on the people who are making the show and it's interesting. It's worth, it's all worth reading. Definitely. Like, and I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, and it talks about like, you know, how COVID interfered when COVID was brand new, it interfered with the show um, in the, in the creation of the show. So, um, yeah, and then we get into talking about maybe some of the more interesting things that we're all interested in. Um, you know, it talks about the challenges of, of adapting this and, and the realization that it's not really, uh, that they're having to work from something that doesn't entirely exist, right? They're having to create a story that is worthy of Tolkien and uh, working from notes that he, you know, from, from basically a bare bones story that he had given down and handed on to us. 
Uh, and that brings its own challenges. Mm-hmm. I'm sympathetic to that. I really like, again, I want to see this thing succeed. Mm-hmm. And I think it could, I think it has the potential and it sets the stage for doing good stuff in the future. Yeah. Um, so those are the challenges that, you know, it lines up, it lines up for us. Um, it talks about Christopher's background and, you know, that he was not a, um, he, he was, he was pretty stingy, right. With his father's intellectual properties. And, uh, I love this quote from Michael drought. Who's a, uh, professor at Wheaton college. He's a, you know, one of the probably top Tolkien scholars in the world. And he said, Christopher really disliked Lord of the onion rings and the glorification of violence for its own sake. I love that he called it Lord of the onion rings. <laughs> and I bet, I bet oh that's what Christopher goodness. actually called it. I yeah. bet that's what Christopher actually called it was like Lord of the onion rings or something like that. And that surprised me. Um, it just says he was born in 1924. And so the big special effects movie franchise thing was not something he cared about. If his father had sold all the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit rights to pay the inheritance taxes, I don't think Christopher would have sold them. So, um, you know, that's, that's the, uh, that's the story. So on why Christopher himself was, was hesitant to allow something like this to happen when he was still alive. Um, by the way, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. All right. So that you can, come back and and know when we're posting stuff, including after the Super Bowl, uh, you know, this upcoming Sunday when we react to the new trailer. So yeah, over the years, um, you know, it gives, it gives more background on, on Christopher and, you know, kind of how he viewed, um, you know, the possibility of adaptations and that sort of thing. Um, And, you know, that's, that's what basically the first half of this article is all of the background on the deal and why it took so long to happen and why it costs so much. Um, we get to know the two showrunners, uh, Payne and McKay, I believe are their, uh, their names. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they're a really interesting story actually, because they are, um, they were, apparently they were friends growing up and they somehow landed to be showrunners on this thing when neither one of them like had an actual Hollywood credit before. Um, now it's not to say they hadn't done a lot of work in Hollywood because, but because you can do a lot of work in Hollywood and never have anything come to fruition, right? There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. There's a lot of stuff that never happens. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's an interesting, that's really interesting. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, apparently a lot of people like pitched for this thing, like to be the showrunners for it. And a lot of people with maybe more stylish credentials than them pitched for it. So they must've impressed somebody. Yeah. I'm just hoping that they didn't impress them in the sense that like, uh, they were like, well, we can, these people are malleable enough. We can use them. They're looking to make a name for themselves. I hope yeah. that wasn't a calculation. Well, it does say that they pitched to the Tolkien family as well. Yeah. So you like to think that that's a little encouraging to me. Mm-hmm. Like surely the, you know, Tolkien's own kin wouldn't have, have let something go forward that they didn't approve of. But yeah. yeah. Uh, it goes into a little bit why they have been so secretive about the show. And it uh, talks a little bit about the, um, when Tom Shippey was fired, um, of course, back in 2019, right. Mm-hmm. Several years ago mm-hmm. now, but, um, but that was obviously a, like, I think the first big point of concern for people was, you know, we heard Tom Shippey was on and like, Oh, this should be pretty good. And then it was like, Tom Shippey got fired and it's like, Oh crap, what's going to happen now. <laughs> so, um, and, and drought again, who I think is very quotable is, uh, he says, it seems like the NDA is basically, if you tell anyone we can put you through a wood chipper. Right. So, <laughs> um what's the nda the non-disclosure agreement oh. right so it's something that businesses force people to sign when gotcha. uh you know they, they've got when they don't want them talking about what they're doing for them okay. okay um and apparently there are scholars that work on it but amazon no longer shares their names so okay yeah um let's see here um man i didn't think it was take me to- so long to get down to the actual interesting things <laughs> it's a long article it is a very long article yeah. all right here we go first off so will this be appropriate for families or is this going to be game of thrones level carnage and who knows what else the answer is no mckay says the goal was to make a show for everyone for kids who are 11 and 12 and 13 even Mm -hmm. though sometimes they might have to pull the blanket up over their eyes if it's a little too scary okay we talked about the tone in tolkien's books this is material that is sometimes scary and sometimes very intense sometimes quite political sometimes quite sophisticated but it's also heartwarming and life-affirming and optimistic it's about friendship and it's about brotherhood and underdogs overcoming great darkness. Oh, so, okay. you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm genuinely glad to hear that. Um, I've heard, other, I've heard elsewhere that people have seen TV 14 uh, ratings associated with it, which I think is a good sign. I think that's right on, you know? Um, so I'm, I can live with that. Yeah. 
I can yeah. look at that for sure. Mm -hmm. That's a good take too on uh, Tolkien's writing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Another concern is the series going to put hobbits in the second age. In short, so to speak, yes and no. Oh. So apparently, um, you know, they, they acknowledge that, you know, that there's not really any record of hobbits doing anything before the third age. Um, but they're, they can't, they're like, but we can't really make a middle earth show without hobbits. So what they say is they're basically going to be uh, using Hobbit ancestors called Harfoots. And I think it'll be interesting to talk about to debate whether this is acceptable from a canonical standpoint, but I'm okay to accept that that I, I knew there was going to be Hobbits in the show. And honestly, like, mm -hmm. I feel kind of like that. And I feel like I honestly, I feel like if, if, if Tolkien had written this, he would have put Hobbits into it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I truly feel that if he had gotten around to writing a book about the second age, he would have put Hobbits into it somehow. I think what's really interesting about this is that um, they liken it to like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Um, so that they're going to have kind of like these Hobbit characters who play like a little sort of side thing. That's really funny. And um, you know, there's kind of the comic relief element. So, so these Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, I believe Greta are, uh, okay. Do you know who they are? I do not okay. Know who they so are. basically I think they're, they're Shakespeare characters and I believe they are in Hamlet, but I might be wrong on that. Um, um, okay. But they're basically these, uh, these like minor characters or relatively minor characters that end up kind of stealing the show in, in one of Shakespeare's plays because they're really funny. And then I think somebody, I, I don't know who wrote Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, but um, I think it's a, you know, it's a play based on, you know, based on these characters that Shakespeare created. So it's kind of like, I think they're going to have these two hobbits who apparently are going to be female hobbits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Markela Cat, was that the name of this person? That's what I was just wondering. You got to go back up. The one with the, the pointed ears? No. No, that's not. No. Okay. So, yeah. So we're going to have these two hobbits and apparently I don't think they're the only hobbits we're going to have, or we'll call them Harfoots, right? Um, that are, you know, going to play some sort of interesting side role in this story. Mm -hmm. And it says they encounter a mysterious lost man whose origin promised to be promises to be one of the show's most enticing enigmas. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Tom Bombadil with amnesia. I don't know. Maybe oh. I was joking about that, but oh. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Who knows? I was gonna say, sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, that works. Um, let's see. Then we have, uh, then they, they talk a little bit about like the background of certain characters. Um, and, and they talk about the whole, like, um, you know, they're going to have, they're going to have, uh, some, some black characters and some characters mm -hmm. that don't look like the rest of the characters that we're used to from Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. in terms of skin tone. And I shared my thoughts on that earlier mm -hmm. and, you know, where I you know kind of stand on that. Um, so they talk about this Sir Lenny Henry, a Brit of Jamaican descent, who is going to play a Harfoot elder. Um, and I think, you know, there's, I'm going to, we're going to have to like really get into the text to talk about why I think these things are, are, are okay as possibilities. Um, and there's also the, uh, you know, the question of just like, this happened a long time ago, right? And, you know, like, honestly, skin tones can change over time, right? Even in like, you know, different groups of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into all of that. And now is not really the time. Um, but I think there was, let me see if I can find the quote that, you know, I didn't have a very good reaction to. Uh, it felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. So that to me is like, you're not really saying anything there. Like you're just saying words. You're, you're just, no, like, okay, that's, that's true. But that's, that's just true. Like, that's not, that's like really not possibly false. So I think they call that a tautology, right? Um, just, okay, that, thanks for not saying anything. Tolkien is for everyone. His stories are about his fictional races doing their best work when they leave the isolation of their own cultures and come together. I'm really just, I'm really worried that there's going to be this like surface level thinking with this stuff. And it's just like, hey, what does it matter? We got some hobbits. We got some, you know, we got some black ones over here. We got some, you know, green ones over here. We got some white ones over here. What does it really matter? Right. Um, and it's like, but everything matters mm -hmm. in Tolkien, right? All of the details matter. That is a very Tolkienian thing. Yeah. And so I'm okay. I'm okay with the idea of there being, I, I have nothing against the idea, prima facie, right? Like kind of on initial reaction, I'm just like, how do you connect it to the legendarium? Right. 
because if you're, you're, I'm not okay with you starting to make a mess of the legendarium, right? Because you're working in something that Tolkien gave you plenty of info for, right? Mm-hmm. He really did, right? He, he gave you enough to make something that is, that is good, right? May not be, it's not going to be Lord of the Rings itself because he didn't write it. And part of the wow. Lord of the Rings is that it's amazing literature, but he gave you enough to make something pretty good. So I, I hope, uh, that's fair. yeah, I hope Lindsay Weber, you know, thinks a little, think, thought more deeply about this than just what she said here, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. They talk about like, you know, there was a, you know, negative reaction to uh to when they started to release some of the you know pictures of characters and that kind of thing and look yeah there's probably going to be like some racist idiots out there that just have negative reactions just because but there's also just people who are maybe not going to say it in the best way who just are like why aren't you doing what tolkien said right and you know and 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 if they it's extremely dishonest if they're going to just be like well if you don't like the fact that there's a black dwarf then you know you're just racist like that's unacceptable people like you can do better than that mm. quite honestly like mm. um and, and and actually hear what people are saying e- even if they're not saying you know because not all of us are getting paid to do that you know to to do this work right right so you need to hear the fans out and 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 listen to their concerns especially when they actually have a point right mm-hmm. um again i'm not talking about you know we're not talking about like people who are saying ridiculous racist garbage we're talking about people who are trying to say hey what did tolkien say though and this or this violates this aspect of canon because maybe it doesn't, maybe there's a good rebuttal to that, Right. but you got to make it the right way. Yeah. And the reverse is true too. Mm-hmm. Like we as fans need to be willing to listen to their reasoning about why they did things, chose to do things the way they did. Right. Yeah. We might not agree, but we need to be willing to listen. For sure. It goes both ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I thought this was cool. I was just looking through here and it says that, um, uh, we get to see Casa Doom, yes, in its full glory. Um, and it's also going to uh, we're going to see Celebrim mm-hmm. um, brought to life, and well, obviously Elrond and Isildur, yeah, is also going to be in it. So that's yeah. cool. I I thought it was interesting how they call him. Uh... Another storyline will follow a sailor named Isildur, right? Yeah. Um, okay, like he's just a sailor. Like <laughs> they go on to say, he becomes yeah, a warrior, he becomes cuts a the soul corrupting ring off yeah. Sauron's hand, and then falls victim. Well, we to all his know. Powers yeah, I know. I was like, oh wait, he, I guess he would have been a sailor. Yeah. But I'm just like, um, you know, essentially they didn't use that opportunity to make a, a connection back to Lord of the Rings itself um, initially, mm. and. And I'm just like, I just feel like this weird way to talk about Isildur. It's like a it's a sailor. Know, yeah. You know, it, he's a sailor named Isildur. It's like, yeah, he's yeah. a little bit more than a sailor. It's like you, the dude, the dude was a dude. Like he was, a, <laughs> he was, he was awesome. Right? Yeah. Even though he screwed up with the whole ring thing, but uh, he was awesome. So uh, then on to Sauron, uh, villain's presence is a major factor throughout the second age, culminating in his resurrection as a tyrant. As the show begins, there are only hints of the danger to come. Some see them clearly. Others don't necessarily want to. Bayona drew from his memories growing up in Spain, a country still recovering from a civil war decades before he was born. We had a dictatorship for 40 years, so you notice the repercussions of war and the shadow of the past. Um, I think this is all about the repercussions of war. This is an idea that feels very faithful to Tolkien, which is intuition. Uh, Galadriel has an intuition that things are not fixed and there is still something uh, something lurking. Hmm. Um, So it's interesting that they are using the shadow of the past as the uh, the title of the first episode because that's of course the title of the second chapter of Lord of the Rings, Shadow of the Past. Oh. Hmm. Give me my water, please. Yep. <coughs> so, so yeah, we know we know Sauron is going to be kind of the specter lurking in the background, and we expect to see him. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and and so I'll be honest, like bef- like we got um long article two paragraphs to go by the time i got here when i was reading it i was like i was feeling pretty i was feeling pretty good i had my, you know my questions and everything and i was like you know okay sounds good and i get to this next paragraph i was just gonna wonder if we were gonna talk about that oh boy in the novels the aforementioned things take place over thousands of years but Cain, Payne, and mckay have compressed events into a single point in time
Uh, yeah, no big deal. It's just 3,000 years. <sighs> Come on. Well, John, listen, look at the rationale. What did they say? It's not going to make it better. I'm not saying it's, it's going to make, make it better, better, but we just talked about how we need to hear their side of the story. It is their... It is their biggest deviation from the text, and they know it's a big swing. <clears throat> we talked with the Tolkien estate, says Payne. If you are true to the exact letter of the law, you are going to be telling a story in which your human characters are dying off every season because you're jumping 200 years in time, and then you're not meeting really big, important canon characters until season four. Look, there might be some fans who want us to do a documentary of Middle Earth, but we're going to tell one story that unites all these things. <clears throat> So you want a documentary of Middle Earth? That's what you no, want. No, no, that's a no. That that's a. I find that insulting. That, I do too. Right? I really do. Yeah. I, I think that's insulting to Tolkien, quite mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. I, I. This is a. This is kind of a how dare you moment, right? Um. I'm. I'm gonna watch the show, but that does not make me feel good about what you're doing. Because you're compressed. You're talking about. I mean, we don't know what that means, really. Hold on. You yeah. keep talking. Do a little song and dance. It's true. Go. Yeah, we 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 don't know exactly what that means. Um, but I mean, <coughs> are, here's my question: Are oh, he said human characters? I was going to say not all the characters are dying off because some of them live for thousands of years. <laughs> but he did say human characters. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I mean. Well, then, then don't tell the story, right? Then don't make the stupid show. Okay. If you can't do it, like if, if that's your attitude towards a 3000 year time span, you're like, well, you see, like we couldn't actually do our show. So we had to <clears throat> elves can live for thousands of years. Galadriel, <clears throat> by the end of the third age or by the end of the second age, is over three thousand years old. Probably closer to like four or five thousand years old, right? Um, part of the theme here is that men live much shorter lives than elves. You know, when I was thinking about how they were going to do this, I was like, they could do this really cool. They could like, I, I you know, one of the things I remember we talked about Lost earlier, and they actually, I guess, mm-hmm. they got this job partly because J.J. Abrams gave them a big, you know. Uh, the the two Payne and McKay got this job because J.J. Abrams gave him a big recommendation. Okay. <clears throat> but you know, J.J. Abrams, part of the team that created Lost, <clears throat> and one of the things I loved about Lost was the um, were the episodes where they like jumped back, right? Where they jumped back into like an ancient time or like you know years before, and they told stories from the past, mm-hmm. right? On, like kind of for flashbacks. whole episodes, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. They would spend mm-hmm. a whole episode telling a story from the past, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I saw that initial picture of the tree of the two trees of Valinor mm-hmm. uh, back last September, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. they're going to do like cool, some cool like flashback stuff. This yeah. would be great, right? Yeah. You could have told a show, a story like that, could right? Have. You yeah. could have told a story and you're like, okay, here's the main story we're telling. Mm-hmm. We've got to do a lot of stage setting. So we're going to have to go back and talk about Elros, right? We're mm-hmm. going to have to go back. I mean, are you going to put Elros and Isildur like as contemporaries? Because they had life, they had lives like, almost 3000 years apart. Right. Um, I'm just like, what does this actually mean? And I'm, and I'm like, and why did you bury it towards the very end? Right. It's like, Oh, because they didn't think people were going to make it this far because <laughs> of the article. So I, I would have jumped ship second, like third paragraph probably at the latest. Yeah. So maybe they're hoping people aren't going to see this. I don't know. <laughs> but this, this does not give me warm foot. This, this yeah. this kind of like everything that I was feeling good about before I'm mm. like oh yeah because I'm just like if that's your if if you can just like do it in that cavalier manner that's very concerning to me because what else can you do in mm-hmm. that cavalier manner what what other things can you justify right um so yeah I am just very disappointed by that by that paragraph right there I'm very concerned about that very disappointed by it and. I don't know. Like I'm going to remain open-minded as I can be, yeah. but I'm not sure you can, you can actually do this thing justice if that's your attitude. Right. If that, like after what you just said there, that bodes very well, very poorly in my mind yeah. for the show. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it'll still be enjoyable on a number of levels, but as I saw somebody uh, who <laughs> basically on Twitter, I saw that and I, and I, uh, I, I quoted that line in response to this article. And I said, um, 
and I posted a, an, an, image, an image of a professional baseball player mm-hmm. who had just had something bad happen. And he was saying, fun, oh. right? <laughs> it said, it was captioned as, uh, darn it, right? Um, but, you know, that was kind of, that's kind of my reaction here, right? So we've got um, somebody responded to that tweet and just said, yeah, it looks like it's basically going to be some glorified fan fiction, you know? Um, but like at least fan fiction with Tolkien tends to want to try to do everything according to how he, they think he would have done it. Right. In mm-hmm. a lot of cases. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like, you could have done this. Like it's, yeah. it's possible. I, it's not, it's not even that hard to think about how to do it. Right. I know it presents challenges, mm-hmm. but you know, we're just going to wait and see. We're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of gaps. I need to, like you said, this is basically like this sketch of a story, right? I, I, and, I, and I probably wouldn't have reacted so strongly to that if you would have been like, you know, look, we had to do some, you know, I, I understand there's going to be creative licenses. I'm not, in no way do I believe that it's possible that this thing is going to be as pu- purely Tolkienian as I wanted it to be, right? Um, but like, I think just it was the way he caval- like he kind of cavalierly dismissed the ideas there at the end, yeah. you know, like, the, like this the snarky quant commentary yeah. about some fans want us to do a documentary of middle earth, but we're going to tell one story that unites all these things. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that's what Tolkien did is he just did a it documentary. It doesn't even make any sense. I know. Like you're calling the Silmarillion in the documentary. Like I, that doesn't, that doesn't even make any sense. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like, you can tell this, right. You, you pick the story you're going to tell, which I'm mm-hmm. perfectly, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with it being a story that focuses on the end of, um, of the second age. Right. And, and that's kind of the main thrust of the mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. but you can tell it by referring back and doing long references back to other parts of history. Mm-hmm. Right. And guess what? It wouldn't even be that hard because the, like Gladriel would probably look about the same in those other periods of history. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's true. And Elrond would probably look the same in those other periods of the second age, yeah. right? except if yeah. it's like the very beginning of it. So yeah. anyway, you know, time will tell. Time will tell. Time we'll will just, tell. You know, at the very worst, we're going to have some really interesting discussions. Yeah. Oh, so. for sure. And and I know there's going to be things I enjoy about the show, but yeah. uh, that's that was just very disappointing to read. I, I, I agree. Article. No, that is. that that's, that's definitely leaving things on a pretty sour note as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, we just got to be open-minded. We just yeah. got to commit to being open-minded and, you know, just see how it all turns out what does he say he says we think the work will eventually speak for itself yeah and i hope that's true like i truly do well and y'all we'll just have to see tell us your thoughts in the comments below mm-hmm. um let us know what you think of this article and uh and remember subscribe and click that notify bell for the tolkien road channel right below this video and we're going to talk we'll be talking about the trailer after the super bowl so you'll find out and be able to talk about that with us, but yeah. I want to hear all your thoughts on this article and the pictures you've seen mm-hmm. and those sorts of things. So yeah. yeah. Hit us up. All right. All right. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>